What's up guys, Mark here back with another quick design video and in today's video uh, I'm going to show you guys how to create a warped type effect on your text. So I, I just recently, actually just today I painted this skateboard with the, the text with like a kind of wavy effect on it and a bunch of people asked me how to create that sort of effect. So there is actually a couple of very easy ways that you can do this in both Adobe Illustrator and in Photoshop. The way that I prefer to do it is in uh, Illustrator, I think you get more control and uh, yeah, I'm going to quickly show you how to do that in just a couple of minutes. So first up, I'm just going to type in some text. I'm going to type in the word text massive, um, which just, you know, makes sense. Type in whatever you like in whatever font you like. It doesn't even have to be a font. It could be hand lettering or an illustration or something that you've drawn. Uh, I'm going to just use DDC hardware regular by Aaron Draplin. I really love this font at the moment. This is available on Lost Type Co, by the way, uh, for free for personal use too. So anyway, uh, to create this effect, all you have to do is select your text or your illustration and go to Object, Envelope Distort, and then Make with Mesh. So for this step here, if I just hit Preview, basically the rows and columns, uh, I think about this as, it, as, you know, the more rows and the more columns I have, the more control I get and the more detail I get. So if you wanted to have sort of like one wave through it, you'd only want to have one or two rows, oh sorry, two rows really, and you know, not too many columns. If you wanted to have a lot of different ripples and a lot of different effects, you could bump it up a lot. Don't worry too much about it though, because you can change it afterwards anyway. So for now, uh, I'm just going to keep this really simple. I'm just going to set it to three rows and the columns I'll just leave. Alrighty, so now what this has done is it's basically, it's created a mesh over our type and it's it's added in all of these points, these little anchor points here. So if I move these points, what it will do is it will adjust the type to suit. So for example, if I use the direct selection tool, which is A on your keyboard or the solid arrow up here, I can click this point here and I can drag it away and the text adjusts to, to compensate for that. So for example, if you had a circle and you wanted your text to fill the circle, you could you know, drag the points individually and, and move it up and fill whatever shape you wanted. And you can also adjust the individual anchor points here as well, but uh, that's not quite what we want to do today. So to create the effect that I use, which, which is sort of like with the, the ripple through it, all you have to do is select, uh, I'm going to highlight an entire row of these anchor points with the direct selection tool. I'm going to drag them to the right like that. I'm going to grab the next row here. So I've got all four of these points selected. Oh, sorry, five. And I'm going to drag them to the left. Then I'm going to select the third row. I'm going to drag them to the right, but not quite to the same point, just to keep things a bit different. And then I can select the bottom row and I can drag them the other way. And yeah, that that's really all there is to it. So if you want to, you can, I'll just duplicate this real quick. Uh, you can still make changes to the individual ones. For example, this X looks a bit awkward, I think. So if I wanted to make it a different shape, I can still change a lot of these these individual points in here as well, as you can see. So there's a lot of customization, which is why this is really good. If you were thinking about Photoshop, the way that a lot of people do this sort of effect is using the liquify tool in Photoshop. But uh, I find that I get more control with this and just generally it, it's just better really. Uh, so yeah, that, that's mostly it. Now if you did this and you thought oh, I wanted to add more ripples to it, you can go up the top here and you can add in more rows if you wanted to. So if I add eight, which is pretty extreme, um, if I set it to eight, I can really come in now and add, I can start really kind of messing with all of these. Um, and in fact, it's probably going to be easier if I just set it to one column as well. So now I just have two points to worry about on either side, so I can drag those around. And obviously this is getting a bit ridiculous, but just to demonstrate the point, you can really do whatever you want with it and get, get pretty crazy. So that's basically how I, I did it for the skateboard that I painted. I did this then printed it out and made like a sort of a, pat, a pounce, what's called a pounce pattern um, to create a chalk outline on the skateboard before I painted it. But uh, yeah, there you go. That's really all there is to it. And yeah, I hope this made a lot of sense. And if it didn't, by all means, ask any questions in the comments. If there's anything else you've seen me do or you've seen online that you want to learn, you know the drill, just uh, post in the comments and I will get right on that straight away with a video for you guys. So yeah, thanks very much guys. Have a good one and I will talk to you soon.